In this video, I'm going to explain every part of the Stable Diffusion web UI you need to know about to generate amazing AI art. We won't be speaking about any extensions, but I will go through all the basic settings of text to image generation and explain them in detail. Let's move from top to bottom. Now the interface you have might be slightly different from the one that I have right now, but I doubt it would matter since the names of these items are still the same. So let's start with this Stable Diffusion checkpoint. What is a checkpoint? Think of it as a pre trained stable diffusion model file that is trained on a specific set of images related to a specific style. You got anime checkpoints, comic book checkpoints, checkpoints for realistic art, fantasy scenery, and many more. Where do you download these models? You can download them from a site called Civit AI. Once you visit the site, you'll find a ton of models in here. You can click any one of them, go hit the blue download button, and then download it for free. The file downloaded will have either a .ckpt extension or a .safe tensor extension extension. Once this is downloaded, go to its location, then go to your Stable Diffusion Web UI install directory. Now visit the Models folder, then the Stable Diffusion folder, and paste the file you downloaded in here. Now to load it, you can click the blue refresh icon right here, and then see the drop-down menu. Now you'll be able to see your checkpoint. Click on it and wait for it to load. Once it is loaded, it's time to move a bit down and see what this is. In Stable Diffusion, the image is generated based on a set of prompts. The first box here is for the prompt. This is where you type what you need. The box below it is for negative prompts. And here you can type out anything you don't want to be included in the image. We usually use this negative prompt box to include keywords like worst quality, low quality, monochrome, so that stable diffusion will always generate quality art. Now, why don't you give this a shot? Once you have downloaded a model, go and type a keyword like woman on beach. And for the negative prompts, write something like worst quality, bad quality, monochrome, disfigured hands, and a couple of more keywords. The keywords I type will always be included in the description. To generate the art, hit the big orange generate button. Down below in the large blue box to the right, you'll see your image slowly being generated. Now that you generated an image, it's time to see what these boxes to your right are. The first is to load the same prompts as the last generation. Let's say you type something, hit generate, then quit stable diffusion, but once you come back, you can click on this button and get that prompt back again. The recycle bin icon is to delete your prompt completely. The image icon after that is to load Loras. What are Loras? They're just like checkpoints, but this time is centered around a specific character, setting, or art style, and it is very small in size compared to checkpoints. For example, let me download this arcane style Laura. I hit download and copy and go to the stable diffusion directory. Go to models, go to the Laura folder, and paste it here. Make sure to paste it in the Laura folder and not the stable diffusion folder. Now when I click the picture icon, then go to the Laura tab, and then hit the blue refresh button, you'll see the Laura has been added. Each Laura has a trigger word you need to include in your prompt, and you can find it in the download page. In this case, it is Arcane Style. I write a prompt to generate Jinx, then type Arcane Style, and then click on the lore below. Now you can see a special keyword was added to the prompt. Now I hit Generate, and there you go. We got an image of Jinx in the exact style we needed. Now see how I used the same negative prompts over and over again? Perhaps you might think it's easier to save these prompts somewhere and generate them when we need to. This is where the Styles box comes into play. Let's say you want to save these negative prompts. Simply click the save button at the very corner and enter the name of the style. Let's just say negative. Now remove everything and assume you're starting from scratch. Now it's all about clicking this style box, choosing our saved style, and then clicking on this paste icon. And boom, there you go. Your time is saved. Generation settings. All right, wipe your hands and the sweat on your brows because we're diving into something advanced. Well, not advanced. This is pretty basic compared to other stuff in this web UI, but it will still to look advanced if you're new to all this. Now that you know how to generate an image, it is time to tweak the settings. All right, let's go. First off, what's a sampler? Stable diffusion usually works by first generating an image with noise on a latent space and then slowly removing the noise. There's a lot of math and graphs involved here, but let me simplify it all and say the way the noise is removed and the image is generated differs from sampler to sampler. The most popular samplers are the DPM ones and Euler A, but you're free to try everything 
out. Some checkpoints work better with some samplers, so always read what's on the model page. If you checked my previous videos, you'll see I always use Euler A or DPM STE Keras, since that works best with the models I use. Right next to it are sampling steps. Remember how I said stable diffusion images are first generated with noise and then the noise is slowly removed? Sampling steps determine how much noise we should remove from the image. A step value between 25 to 50 always works best in this case. A very low step count will produce a blurry image, and a very high step count can actually decrease the quality. Here's an image generated at 3 steps and 90 steps, and now here's an image generated at 35 steps. You can pretty much see the difference, right? Higher sampling steps also eat your VGA, so be careful about that. Below that, we got three options. Restore faces, tiling, and tires fix. Restore faces don't do much and only ruin the faces of the image, so I don't recommend using that setting at all, but you can always give it a shot. Tiling, on the other hand, can generate a tiled image. If I enter a basic prompt, click tiled, and then hit generate, you can see how I get a tiled image. The hires dot fix is the most important one here. It upscales your image during the generation, making some tiny details like eye quality a lot better. To use it, you can simply click the blue checkbox, select the upscaler you want, and then set the higher steps to exactly half the steps of your image steps. This is very important since it saves a lot of your VGA. Now below it, you'll find the width and heights. I'm sure the meaning of these are obvious, but there is something you should keep in mind. The higher the resolution, the more power stable diffusion draws from your VGA. The best solution for this is to input a lower resolution and then use the hires.fix option to generate better quality images. The next option is the CFG scale. CFG scale determines how much freedom stable diffusion has over the image. For example, a value of 1 will give stable diffusion infinite freedom over an image, while a scale of of 15, we'll try to make it very close to the prompt. Both could reduce the quality of the image, so the best is to use a middle value like 7 or 9. To prove this, I'm going to generate an image of a girl in a beach wearing a white swimsuit with CFG scale set to 1. And now I'm going to generate that same image with CFG scale set to 9. See the difference? Right next to this setting, we have batch count and batch size. There's not much a difference between these settings. If I set batch count to 2 and then hit generate, or set batch size to 2 and hit generate, you see I get two results. The only difference is that batch size generates images parallelly side by side. You can even see this in the preview of the images that are being generated. Well, let's say you want two images with the same prompt, and in that case, changing the batch count is always the best. Below the all of that, we have something called the C. What's this about? Every time Stable Diffusion generates an image, we have something called a seed value. This is a unique number given for each generation. And we all know despite typing the same prompt, Stable Diffusion generates different images with some differences in each generation. But by copying the seed of a previously generated image, pasting it into the seed box, you can generate an image closer to the previous one. It won't be the same as the previous one, but it will be close. To test it out, I'm first going to generate an image of a girl in a ballroom with long black hair a red dress, and a blue necklace. Wait a few seconds, and now I'm going to copy and paste the seed of the generated image, which you can find here, right into the seed box, set the batch count to 4. And boom! It's not the same image, but you can see how they closely resemble our original image. Hitting that extra box will give you more options to customize that variation. The variation strength is what determines how close the image should be to the image with the seed. So setting it to 0 will make it very, very close to the original image, and setting it to a larger value will change the image a lot. The seed resizes options allow generating of images from a given seed at different resolutions. Why? Usually the generated images change as the resolution changes, so this will prevent that from happening. And that's it! I'm sure we covered all the text to image settings in Stable Diffusion. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below and I'll try my best to answer them. As usual, hit that like button and also subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video.